Okay, hello. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about recursion, um, how to write recursive functions, how to define them, uh, how to use them. Um, so, um, so uh, quickly, before I get into things, um, I mean, in order to write a recursive function, I mean, re recursion is very important in computer science. Um, and um, I'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, why it's, why it's important later on. But, so, a recursive function or recursive definition is, is a different way of solving a problem than iteration. So most likely if you're in a class like this, like a data structures or algorithms class, you've you've done programming before, you've, you've used iteration a lot to solve problems. So uh, the, solving a problem using recursion is, is, is a different way of thinking, but it's very powerful, okay? So I, I'll admit you don't you don't see a lot of recursive functions or recursive code like in real uh, code bases and things, but that doesn't mean it's not important. I mean, it is used, uh, but um, 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 it, it, it's it's uh, used especially in designing kind of really important kinds of things and concepts. Um, anyway, so for a recursive definition, um, you have to have a definition which is defined in terms of a smaller version of itself. So recursion is all about taking a large problem um, and then specifying a way to solve it by by specifying a, a, a smaller problem, and then you can solve that smaller problem. Um, so the, the the that's known as kind of the general case. Um, so the general case takes a big problem and reduces it down to a smaller problem, but but you know, and then that smaller problem is again another general case, which reduces to an even smaller problem, and so on. But eventually, there has to be some somewhere where the recursion stops, and that's what the base case is. So for re recursion, you have to have a general case. Usually there's just one kind of general case, a, a way of, of breaking a bigger problem into a smaller problem. Um, and, and then often there's one or more base cases. So somewhere the recursion has to stop. You get to a, a, a problem that's so small or, or so simple that there's a direct solution, or, or it's an obvious uh, simple solution of, of, of what the answer is to the question. Okay, so, so the base case stops the recursion. Um, so we're going to show you know some examples and, and what we mean by that. So uh, I'm going to look at uh, writing some uh, a, a couple of recursive uh, functions, probably two here. Uh, I'm going to look at the function call stack. Okay, so we haven't talked about stacks yet in this class that I'm doing these videos for, but um, um, uh, we're going to get a little bit using the debuggers to show how recursion works. Um, and, and just by going over these problems, um, I'm going to um, give you an idea of, of how you go about solving a problem or specifying a problem using a recursive approach, okay? Um, and I might talk a little about, a bit about recursion or iteration, so comparing them. Um, and, um, and, and in this video, I'm going to be uh, doing something a little bit different than some of the previous videos I did, so um, I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit how to, to do how I usually develop things, and I think this is a good way to develop code for uh, assignments for classes like these. So uh, the way I'm going to be showing you, it's really a, kind of a form of test-driven or incremental development here. So let's get started. Um, so unlike before, I mean, I'm going to start with a pretty much a completely blank template here. I mean, there's nothing here, a main function that does nothing, okay? Um, so like I've been telling you, I, I mean, I always make certain that um, uh, that I have something that builds and runs com completely, you know, cleanly, right? So even, even when I'm first starting out and I haven't really, really written any code yet, I, I want to make certain that it actually builds um, and that it actually runs, um, although, yeah, I'm, I'm not um, actually outputting anything here, so, so let's, let's make certain that it actually runs, although I'm going to kind of start... Uh, just put a little bit of output here. So let's build that, Control shift b in Windows Visual Studio, we'll build uh, F5 to run the debugger, and there you yeah, go, we actually are building and we're getting our output there. All right, so let's, um, let, let me go back. So um, I'm going to, um, actually I'm going to start with this one first. Um, so the, the, the textbook that we're using for this class gave a couple of examples uh, of, of 
some recursive functions. Okay, one of them was solving finding the maximum value in a list uh, by uh, using recursion. Okay, so um, let, let me let, let's let's quickly um, write an iterative version of this. Okay, so I mean at this point you should know how to how to write an iterative iterative version of um, um, of finding the maximum value in a list. Now I'm going to write this as a function, okay? Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to write this. I'm not, I'm not going to write some tests for this, not really. So, um, so this is a uh, find maximum in list, and I'm not going to give like a whole lot of code documentation here. Uh, So find the maximum value in a given list and return it. So uh, in this function, uh, I'm going to do this slightly differently than we might have done before. So we have to pass in the list. Um, so we're going to um, pass in an uh, uh, array of integers that we want to, to uh, not really search, but we, we, we want to determine the largest value of it. Um, and instead of passing in the size, so th this is anticipating how we're going to write the, our recursive version. I'm going to pass in uh, two parameters, uh, the begin so the, the begin is the beginning index and then an end So um, here, like for example, if we have a list of size five, so in, in um, um, just to show you what we're doing here, um, so let's test the find maximum. So I guess I will run some tests now I'm thinking about it. So uh, if we have a list of size five, of five integers, Uh, we would declare it like that, but remember the valid indexes since since C and C plus plus is a zero based a zero index based uh, array language. Uh, the first index would be index zero, and the last one would be four. Okay, so the begin would be zero, and the end would be four. So when we're doing uh, th this function recursively, and in this one I'm going to write here, we're going to pass in the actual first index zero. If we want to search the whole list f for the largest one for the for the maximum value, we want to. We'll search. We need to give the beginning index as zero and the ending index as four um, for a uh, list of size five. So um, actually, it's not a list. So I have a an array of integers. Um, so I don't have a list type defined. So uh, let's just put five values in there. Um, three, uh, eight, two, nine. Seven. Okay, so among all those, there's, there's five values there. The large one is nine, right there. The smallest one is three. Um, so yeah, if I was going to call this, I'm going to call my function largest um, I'm going to call the function name will be largest iterative solution. Let's, let's make that a little bit smaller. Largest iterative. So I need to pass in the values and then zero and four. So if I want to find the whole list, uh, if I want to find the maximum value in the whole list, like something like that, right? So, so yeah, back to the idea about test-driven development. So uh, the normal way you do test-driven development is you first write the test, um, and you see that it, it actually is failing, right? So, so actually my build is not going to run. My, my build is just going to fail. Um, it's going to fail to compile until I uh, define my largest iterative uh, function here, uh, undefined. Uh, but... Um, um, so, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to write any more tests for this one. I'll show some more of that in a second for the recursive version. Um, so, 
so this function, we already know, it takes a, an array of integers as the first parameters, um, and then it takes uh, the beginning index and the uh, end index that it should search between. Okay? So an iterative solution is, is fairly simple, right? Um, uh, we saw examples of this when we talked about arrays, so probably the, the best, cleanest solution to do this is to find, is, is, um, is to start out by saying that the largest I've seen so far is the value at, uh, instead of index zero, it's, we're, we're passing in the index we should begin searching from. So it's the largest at the beginning index that we've seen. And then we're going to iterate or loop through the, the values from begin plus one to end. Okay. Um, so Now, in this case, again, since we're actually passing in the actual value of the last index, I don't want to go up to less than n because we're not passing in the size of the array. I want to go in. I want in. If I'm passing in four for the end, I want the loop to, to the, the last time through the loop uh, to be checking when index is four, so that so we're checking the end value as well. Okay, so that's I mean, you know, so that, that's subtle things like that. You know, or, or, uh, for beginning programmers, always bite you. Um, get, getting your begin and end bounds, uh, being off by one error. So yeah, if you just did less than, we'd be off by one. If I if my largest value happened to be the very last one in the list we pass in, you would get the wrong wrong result, unless you use less than or equal to here. So, um, uh, oh, Use commas, had some syntax wrong there. Sorry, <laughs> not similar, similar. Forgetting, forgetting my C syntax. There we go. Um, so, and then um, if uh, the, the list at the index, so we're trying to find the, the largest or the max, so if that's bigger than the largest so far, we remember that new value instead. We should return the one that we find. So there are some things here, like you know, I'm not doing any real error checking. If begin and end, if if end was before begin, uh, this this function won't work, and some other stuff. If we're doing this for you know, uh, for a real uh, bit of uh, code that we wanted to write, uh, we, we might have to do some some more be a bit more defensive, uh, but. Um, Anyway, that should compile now that I've got a, a largest iterative function defined. Um, and then, like I said, that I'm, I'm just going to do this one test. So, uh, actually, maybe I'll do two tests. But this first one, we expect if we search the whole list, we should get nine, right? Um, so, um, uh, let's uh, run that and see. So, yeah, we, we did seem to get the right answer, nine, the one we were expecting. Um, I should be able to search like a part of the list. Let's say if I only search the, the first three values from index zero to index two, uh, we're, we should expect uh, eight, right? So anyway, so, so that's an example of an iterative solution that you might be familiar with for finding the maximum value, right? So kind of back to this, uh, we can we can do this recursively. Um, so the idea is that uh, I'm going to be using the same kind of function. So here, f is going to be the name of our function. I'm going to give it again. I'm going to give it a name, largest recursive, and start instead of largest iterative, but. Uh, our largest recursive function takes the same three parameters that we just used, the list uh, and a begin and end. Now here, recursively, if we give begin equal to end, this is our base case, or the trivial case, right? So if begin equals end, that means there's just one value in the list, right? The list is of size one. Uh, and, and of course, the largest value in, in the list of that size is that value itself. So if begin equals end, we just, we can return, I mean, since beginning is end, we can return 
at list begin or list end, you know, but, but, but we just return that value. Otherwise, um, this is our general case, the recursive case. Now, the textbook did, did a, diff a slightly different uh, version of this, so I'm doing this slightly differently, okay? The, the textbook, I should have written this down, um, the, the textbook said take the maximum of the value at the list begin um, and all the, the, the value of that versus the value of calling the function on the list from begin plus one to end, okay? So the recursive version in our textbook uh, uses just simple tail recursion uh, to compare the, the, the first value to the largest in the rest of, of, of the, the list, the list from begin plus one to the end, okay? So that's one way you could do the recursive uh, implementation. I'm doing this slightly differently. I'm going to take the midpoint of my list. So I'm going to find, so, so the way that I read this is uh, I want to find the largest value from the beginning to the, to the midpoint. So begin plus n divided by 2, if we do integer division, would find the middle value. So for example, if our list was of size 5, of, of size five we would give the begin index as 0, the end index is 4. So 0 plus 4 would be 4 divided by 2 would give a midpoint of 2. So that, that means that this first part would search for the largest value in indexes 0, 1, and 2. And then this one, so we do we do the midpoint plus one, so this would search from three to four. So this this would end up searching the first three values for a list of size five, and this would search the the list of the the, the last two values, right? But no, these are recursive. So when we do that again, you know, this for example, when we're searching uh, for the the values from zero to two, this calls our largest max function, but with zero and two as the beginning and end index. So in that case, then, it would split it up. The midpoint would be 0 plus 2 divided by 2, so it would be at 1. So then it would split it up into two searches for the largest, um, from 0 to 1, and then from 2 to 2. And that's fine. That's where we reach the first uh, base case. So when we search from 2 to 2, we don't have, we end the recursion, and we know that the maximum value from 2 to 2 is the, is the value of 2. And then we're going to compare that to the one that we find here, all right. So hopefully that makes sense. But um, let's uh, let, let's just implement that, okay? So um, so uh, um, I use the same uh, I'm going to use the same set of values, uh, my same list here uh, for my tests um, in this function. Um, so um, yeah, let's write the function. So I often, instead of starting completely from scratch, I just copy my header, uh, especially if I have a header that's similar to what I want to do. So we want to find the maximum in a list using a recursive solution. So we're taking the same parameters. Um, um, so yeah, for test-driven development, you know, um, basically, usually you write the test first. So um, kind of the first thing, if, like for a recursive solution, we want to test our base cases first, all right? So uh, a base case is anytime we, we pass in begin and end, uh, So let me do it like this. Um, I'm going to be using that a lot. So let's say I use B and E for begin and end. So let's test a base case where begin begin equals zero. And uh, n equals. Um, oops. And and n equals zero.
All right. So, um, so uh, did I forget to change the name, the name of the function? Yeah, I did. So, uh, this should be called largest. So, let's see if that builds. builds uh, and let's run it uh, so yeah I mean um, for our first base case the uh, the expected value you know if I pass in zero zero the, the maximum value should be uh, three right so uh, I mean our function doesn't do anything yet. I haven't, haven't actually written uh, any implementation of the code even to, to solve the base case yet uh, so it's just returning zero. So another thing, and uh, the, uh, another reason why I'm showing you this is, is the program assignments after the third or the fourth one, uh, I'm going to be giving you main functions that have unit tests or little incremental tests like this. Um, so um, I like to use, uh, I mean, you know, normally um, you, you would use like a, a real, a nice framework to do unit tests, but you can get the basics of unit testing or test-driven development, just using simple assert statements. Um, so for program for, for assignments for my uh, uh, classes like this, where we're programming, um, learning programming, uh, I like to start you off with using like a, just a, a simple assert statement. So we ex we expect we're going to assert that the result. Um, and, and let me, uh, again, so I can make all these tests a lot faster to write here. Let me uh, change it so that we're saving the result into a variable. So um, we, we expect that the result... Um, when we give b and e to be 3, right? So let's assert at this point, uh, not see assert, just assert, assert that the result um, is uh, 3, right? If, if we're working correctly for the base case, we'll begin equals n, and we pass in 0 for begin and n, we should get 3 as the result. So let's build that. Um, oh, we got a semicolon. We'll build and we'll run. So, um, so, um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the, yeah, I had the, the syntax wrong. So the assert function takes a single value, true or false. So I want to assert that result equals three. And if, if I if if it's not true, if I if if that uh, assertion is false, <coughs> you'll get a message here. So uh, there, that that's the correct way to do the the assertion test. So um, now if we run that. Um, so the, the the largest value is three. Uh, oh, because I'm using largest iterative. Um, okay, so uh, so again, you know, um, it's good. So I had problems in my code. I meant largest largest recursive. All right, now we're, we're testing the largest recursive uh, function here. Largest iterative is working. So I could have done the same test I'm about to do here uh, for my iterative version. So, okay, we're built. All right, so notice, I mean, I, I, I continually build and run uh, here. So, um, so, uh, notice, so when you do an assertion, it actually causes an, an error um, or it causes your program to terminate. So, yeah, I, I didn't notice this on Visual Studio, but, yeah, it actually pops up a message if you're using Visual Studio. You might not get a message like that depending on which compiler and IDE you're using. So let me bring that message back up again. So notice, so on the terminal we see assertion failed. 
um, and uh, we, we get um, um, this message about abort has been called. But, but the, the, the important one is here. So this message from our assertion, the assertion that result equals 3 has failed because we got 0 back. We're, we're expecting that the largest should be 3, and we got 0. So, um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, so let's write our, our function. So, so this, this is kind of the way test-driven development usually often works. It's the way it's supposed to work. You write the test first, the test is failing, now we actually write the code to make the test succeed. So we're trying to write our base cases for um, our recursive function here. So, so remember, I'll bring it back up real quickly, you know, the base case is the, is the simply, if b equals e, just return that value, that, the, that, that one and only value. So, like that. So that's our base case. All right. And, and uh, in fact, I mean, that's really the only base case that we need uh, uh, here. So, um, uh, and, well, we've only got one base case for this. Uh, recursive definition, so that will be all that we'll need, and this will handle all of our base cases. So, so we'll test those other. But, but anyway, let's let's check that we're now passing our test now. So if I re rebuild um, and run, oops, um, there we go, um, and it didn't hit that assertion, and we got three back, um, and our assertion was true. Okay. So let's, let's try um, another one, right? So the, the reason why I added in all these variables is now I can just kind of copy and paste uh, these tests. So um, so like any time B and E are equal. So let's let's test it. Let, let's test. Uh, it's, it's always good when you're working with arrays to test. It works. At the beginning of the array and at the end of the array, because because often you're off by one or things like that. So let's also say that this array, our last index is four. So let's test it at four. Um, and we, we're we're expecting that we should get a seven because our value at seven or our, our value in the list at index four is seven, right? Build that and run. So we're passing that test as well. Um, and one more. So let's test in the middle, just to be safe. So, um, so we'll test at index 3, right in the middle of, of our list. So we expect the result to be uh, a 2, the maximum value to be 2 if begin and end are index 3, right? So again, I'll show you. Let me well, let's build and run that. Okay. So, oops, we aborted. So um, uh, it returned that the largest value is nine. Um, Oh, I, 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 yes, yeah, so I miscounted. I wanted the one at index two, not at index three. The one, at the, so it is correct that the one at index three is nine, uh, but, uh, but yeah, let me, let me correct that. So the the largest value at beginning and end are two should be two. All right. Run. There we go. Now everything's running, and and all the the tests are passing. Okay. Um, so again, the, the value of these asserts are if you break something, so for example, if this test wasn't passing anymore, uh, it'll stop right there and you'll see exactly which line um, uh, the assertion failed at and, and which test is not working, right? So now if I do that, we uh, our assertion at line 99 that result equals 6. Um, is, is not working. So yeah, if we go back here and look at line, line 99, we can see uh, which test we ran with and try and figure out what the problem is uh, right from there. So, um, But yeah, let's go back and make that um, 
work again. So the one at the beginning is four, should have been seven. build and uh, run and um, and there we're done okay so that's that's pretty much it for our base cases for our recursive function here so now we need to do the test the the, the recursive case okay so uh, again so I mean I can easily do this the way the book did it so the the, the, the general case defined by the book looks something like this um, so we do need a, a max function here which which might look like it's cheating a little bit so uh, we could write our own max function So uh, if, if it's not the base case, everything else should be handled by doing the, a recursive uh, general case, right? Um, I'm just going to use the max function. There, there is a max function in um, in C++ in the algorithms. I believe that's right. Let's try it. Algorithms. Oops. Let's spell include. Uh, so that, that should give us our max. So basically, the, the way the textbook solved this was using simple tail recursion. So we take the max of um, the, the list at begin and uh, the rest of the list. So uh, we, we, have, we need to find, we need to use our largest recursive function recursively. Oops. Um, on the list, but from begin plus one to end, okay? So, and we want to return that, all right? So, I don't know if that's true or not. Max should be coming from, is it, there's just algorithm. Uh, algorithm, not algorithms. I think that's, that's it. There we go. So, uh, so again, you know, it's important that you understand what's happening here. So we're calling large recursive, but on a smaller sub problem. So this is an example of recursion. So we're making the the problem smaller because instead of doing the whole list, for example, if we pass in from zero to four, this is going to find the maximum value from one to four, right? And then that would call it, uh, you know, again within the recursion. Then 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 it would call it from two to four, and then three to four, and so on, right? So um, I believe that this would probably work. Um, I mean, I mean, th this will work, uh, assuming I didn't uh, make a, t um, a typo or a mistake or something. So let's just write a test case for that. So um, we'll just do the whole list. Um, so begin equals zero, end equals four. Now we're testing our general case, right? Uh, and we expect if we search the whole list that the maximum is nine again, right? Uh, we expect a result of nine. So that built, and let's run that. So we got the right answer, right? Um, and you know I could add some additional cases in here. Let's change that. So again, you know, um, this is a different way of defining the recursion, slightly more complicated. So instead of just getting a straight um, um, stack of recursive calls, this is going to cause a tree of recursive calls to happen. So we're going to be doing the, the left and the right. Uh, one reason I wanted to do it like this is because uh, in our next chapter, uh, the next unit in this class, uh, we're going to be doing binary search, which was which could be solved in basically the same way here by breaking things up into half, um, and then recursively doing your work on the two halves, and then keep breaking those two halves into smaller quarters and eighths and so on. Okay, so. Um, um, so let's 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 change this to um, to, to use the, the way I had it described there. So what we need to do is we need to calculate a midpoint, um, which I already gave is um, 
add begin and end together and divide by two. So this does, you know, if, if you know, since begin and end are integers, this is going to do integer division. So if we give zero and four, uh, we're going to get inter 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 integer division is, is the same, so you still get two. But uh, uh, if you do it from, like, let, let's say we have a list of size six, so we have, in, we have values from zero to five, right? So um, in that case, uh, when you calculate the midpoint, 5 plus 0 would be 5, divided by 2 would be 2.5. But integer division causes any remainder to be chopped off. So the integer division would result in a midpoint of 2. So, But that, that's fine. So what would happen then is our, our left recursive call would search from 0 to 2, and then our right recursive call would search uh, the, the list from 3 to 5 for the maximum. Okay. So as long as we specify our left and right-hand side, So the way I had it on that um, uh, on my slide is I'm going to call largest recursive twice. I'm going to call it on the left side of the list from begin to the midpoint, and I'm going to call it on the right side of the list from midpoint plus one to n. Okay, so that should search uh, the, the whole list correctly. Um, um, so let's let's try that. I've already got my test for the general case from 0 to 4, right, uh, for the whole list from 0 to 4. Um, let's run and see that we are getting 9 there. So, yeah, we are getting 9. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, so it might be a good idea to, to test, like, an odd-sized list. Um, so, um, I mean, you know, I, I could create an, another list of values. So if, if it, again, to, to, to do good testing, I, I should be trying to think of all the kind of problems that might happen and be exhaustive on the, on the tests here. So I'm probably not going to write any more test, examples of tests, um, but uh, I'll write one more. So if I search from 0 to 3, not the whole list... Um, so that should still be nine. So and this is also another edge case I should test. I should test if the maximum is the first value or the last value that things are working to make certain that we don't have off by one errors. So, uh, but uh, but like I said, this will probably be my last one. But here, uh, the the other kind of purpose of this test is my my very first time of calling it. The midpoint is going to be if it would be 1.5, 3 plus 0 divided by 2 would be 1.5. So it should split it from 0 to 1 and then from 2 to 3. All right. Uh, but anyway, we, we should get the same result because 9 is at, is at index um, um, 3 here. So we, we should, 9 should still be the expected maximum if we only search from 0 to 3. Okay, um, and yeah, and, and that one's working as well, so we get the same thing, right? So like I said, I mean, you know, uh, probably at this point, you know, to be certain, I would I would probably write some more test cases, you know, and a minimum probably would be good to get to write a test case where the maximum value is, is at the first one that you pass in, and where the maximum value is the last one, we just did that one. Um, and then maybe some bigger lists, and then you can start maybe testing some error cases and putting some more defensive code in there. So what happens if you pass in uh, in that's before begin, things like that. So, um, okay, so, so like I said, I mean, that, that was basically, you know, an example of, of problem solving using recursion, kind of how I do it from, from uh, a recursive uh, definition like this, right? Um, and, um, I mean, I did show you the iter iterative solution for this one, so we've seen that before, for finding the maximum from an array or a list of values, right? So I'll just mention, I mean, usually, often recursion is going to be slower, um, but the, the power is, is that recursion can often make it, for certain types of problems, it's, it's much more easy, it's much easier to specify the solution as a recursive solution than it is to write the iterative solution. The iterative solution can be really complex, and the, the recursive solution can look, look much simpler, even though usually it is going to be a little bit slower. Okay. Um, so let me show one more example. Um, so let, 
uh, th this is a, an exercise from our course textbook um, uh, using a recursive definition. So in this case, we actually have two base cases. And we kind of have two general cases here. So it's not always the case you have just one general case. Right? So, so we want to implement the power function. Um, we're, we're only going to implement raising something to an integer power. So in this case, y uh, needs to be uh, an integer value. But, but the, the, the value x that we want to raise it to uh, can be uh, a float. It should be a double, a floating point number. So, so um, we're also going to handle uh, raising something to a negative power. You know, so for example, if you raise um, a three to the negative two, that's the same as raising one over three squared. So one one eighth, right? Uh, so these are kind of our general case. The, the real general case is this one. So the, the base cases are if, if y is 0, anything raised to, to the 0th power is just 1, kind of by definition of how powers work. But and anything raised to the, the first power is just itself. So 3 raised to the power of 1 is 3, right? Uh, otherwise, it's just x times, so our, our, our general case is this x times the power of that raised to 1 minus you know, the, the, the next smaller power. So, so to find x squared, we take x times x raised to the 1. That will give us x squared. To find x cubed, we take x times x, whatever x squared is. And then we, this recursively figures out what the x squared is. Okay? So um, uh, let's, let's write that function. So I'll just start from scratch. So remember, there is a, there is an implement there is a version of power in the math library for C. So find x raised to the y. Um, here, y as a whole is an integer. Uh, it's an integer power that we're raising to. But x can be a float or a you know, it can be a, a real value number. And uh, this one, this function demonstrates a recursive solution. This is a double, x is a double. So x is, is, the, is the value to be raised to some power. And the result is going to be a double. Um, so we're going to be using floating point uh, arithmetic for the most part. Uh, so re return the uh, result of raising x to the y. So, so I gave the the, um, the the signature of that function. It returns a double. I'm going to call it power, um, and it takes a double value. Uh, called x, um, and then an integer exponent, uh, integer power y. Um, so that should build. We're not actually calling it, and it's not actually doing anything, um, but we're still building. Uh, oh, oh, power must return a value. Now we're still building. Um, so, let's write our test for the base case again. So we'll start by doing our base case test. Um, so we're testing uh, power recursive here. So um, again, our base 
cases are when uh, let's, let's first start with the, the the raising to the zeroth power. Okay, so that, that's one. We've got two base cases here this time. So. So again, so I can e more easily copy and paste these, we'll have, um, so we'll raise five, remember uh, oh, uh, x should be a double. And y should be an integer. So we'll raise five to the zero power for, it doesn't matter what we raise to the zero power, it should always be one, right? Um, Well, actually, I already had a variable called result of type integer, so um, I have to call it something different. Uh, I'll just call it result p. Not a great name. So again, you know, uh, I'm trying to do this a little bit fast here. You should always try to have good, meaningful names here. Um, so, but uh, but yeah, I'll just use that um, um, to um, for the time being. So, and we want to assert in this case, raising to the power, that the value is always one. Um, Kind of a side note here, um, it is actually dangerous to, um, not comma, uh, to, to do a Boolean comparison of, of floating point values because your result could be like 0.99999, you know, really close to one. So your, your calculation could be correct, but just because of really small floating point rounding, uh, it might not be strictly true. Okay, so most testing. Unit test libraries have, uh, instead of an assert equals, have assert close to, where you can say, I want to, to make certain that it's, it's within five or six or ten decimal places, the, you know, if I'm using it, if I'm trying to compare two floating point numbers. Uh, I think for the most part it'll work here. I don't think we'll have any of those kinds of problems, but let, let's try it out. So. Um, so, let's see, that builds. I actually added more than a few lines of code, so um, I always get nervous when I've added more than two or three lines of code. Make certain we're building um, and still running. Uh, but yeah, the assertion should fail because we're returning zero from the function right now. I haven't actually written our base case. So let's go back. Um, so, so yeah, let, let's write that first base case relatively easy, right? y is 0, we should simply turn, return 1. Anytime we try to raise the 0th power, we return 1. Okay. <coughs> now that should fix this. So yeah, the result is 1. Um, and I'm pretty, you know, you know, we could add, we probably don't need to test that one anymore, right? So that's pretty simple. But, um, so let's, let's test our second base case. Whoops. Um, so, um, anytime we raise something to the power of one, raise 5 to the 1 power, we should expect 5. But of course, we're not returning anything. So notice uh, we get a really strange result uh, on the return here. Because we're not, um, we're not again, we're not being very safe, very defensive. 
So if y is not zero, it just returns, it falls off at the end of the function, you basically get, basically get garbage return. So, um, so let's put for a y equals one base case, um, which remember, you know, again, so for the space case, when, when the power is one, just return x, kind of the, the way powers work here. So uh, I'm going to put kind of one final thing here, just um, um, So once we get all of our cases, uh, we should never get, we should never fall off the end of our function. So um, again, yeah, just showing a little bit, being a little bit more defensive than I was in the previous function. So we could do something like say, um, Just a little message, um, and we should probably just exit immediately, or cause cause again like an assertion or an abortion, uh, an abort to happen. Um, so I could do something like that. So if you assert false, it'll it'll uh, it'll abort uh, right there. You know, other ways you could do that. I could just exit or something. So anyway, this will be a little more defensive. So. Like I said, you know, we we, sh we should if we're handling all of our cases, we should never be able to get down to there. So, um, all right. So anyway, back to the raising to the to the first power. So um, we should. Um, uh, we already had written. So let, let's see if that uh, uh, works there. So yeah, raising something to the, raising five to the power of one, we get five. I can try another one here. Um, try something. So here, you know, it might be in danger of, again, this, this equal could be a bit dangerous because I'm using a few decimal points here, but uh, probably will still work here. So anything raised to the power of one should be the, the same thing again. So, um, but yeah, so you know, it didn't it didn't uh, hit the assertion. So you know, it is coming back. So we're we're working fine there with those. So now we got to do our general case. So we'll do the general case of raising to a positive power first. So um, and you should always start kind of from the simple things. So let's raise five to the pot to square five squared again. So now we're testing our general case uh, for when y is positive here, right? And we're expecting 25, uh, 5 squared. So we haven't written the general case yet, so um, uh, we hit that assertion. It's false that, um, um, oh, actually, so we hit the other assertion. So we, uh, we're, we're, we hit my first one inside the function that, where we shouldn't reach this point That's, uh, because there's no case for y equals 2 yet, okay? So um, uh, anyway, so let's go get that in there, though. So um, so we're... Our, our general case for positive y is for y greater than 1. Uh, we're um, to, to return x times, now here's our recursive solution. So again, it should be hopefully obvious to you, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm directly applying um, our recursive definition that we had here, x times calling power recursively, right? 
And it should be obvious to you that this recursion is going to eventually end. So no matter what va positive value that we give in for y, it's going to keep going down by 1 each time that we recursively call power. Eventually, it's going to get reduced down to 1, and we're just going to return x. And then we're going to end up multiplying x times x times x. Multiplying. Again, you should, re I mean, you know, um, um, the iterative solution would just be to write a loop that would execute at y times multiplying x together, right? So we're effectively going to get the same thing to happen here, just uh, doing it recursively. This is this is an example of tail recursion because we recall our recursive function um, um, at the end of our expression for, for uh, calculating our 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 result, our new value here. Okay. So uh, I think that should work for our positive case. So for 5 squared, we get 25 now. Um, maybe try something a little bit tougher. Um, try something more than the power of 3. So let's try, let's say, uh, 2 raised to the 10th power is 1,024, right? So we built, uh, and we run here, and so yeah, we get 1,024. Okay, um, and let's just let's just finish it up here. So um, going a bit longer than I wanted to. Uh, so we had we did have one more general case, like I talked about, for when y is negative to handle um, raising to a, a negative power. So the, the, the idea then was to, to return the, uh, the reciprocal of power of x to the negative y. Okay, so if y is negative, taking the negative of it will make it positive, and 1 over that is, is what raising to a negative power, um, you know, that's the correct answer, right? So notice, I mean, again, this, isn't, this is kind of showing you the recursive solution looks much more like you would define it mathematically, or at least like we did using that conditional mathematical expression. So that's often the case, is that, again, you know, your recursive solution can, can often be quite clear, especially if, if you've uh, written a uh, mathematical uh, definition of it that uses uh, a recursive property like that. You, you can directly translate that into recursive code like this. So, um, all right, so I'll just put one test in there for that. Um, so I'll, I'll raise three to the negative two, uh, no, sorry, two to the negative three. So that should be one eighth, or what? Point zero one two negative. Yeah, point zero one two five one over eight. Um, so test of Janus case for when y is negative, and we're expecting. Um, One divided by eight here, so I, I I just actually do the calculation here. So again, you know, again, this is kind of dangerous. Um, this these two floating point double results because of rounding errors. I really should be using a uh, assert that those are close to instead of exactly equal, but um, probably will work for this small example here. So we built cleanly. Um, and we ran. All right. Um, okay. And um, so that that's basically it. The, one more thing I want to show you. I just want to mention. I want, I want to look at the, the 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 function call stack here real quickly using the, the debugger. Okay. So to do that, let me go back to uh, this where we raise it to the power of ten. So so make sure that you understand what's happening with recursion here. So let, let me run it. Um, and um, so now we're going to call power of two raised to the ten. Okay, so, so we'll step over, step over, step over. We're going to step into this. All right. So now I'm in my power function. So the value of x is two and the value of y is ten. Right. 
So notice what happens, and, and over here is important. So I've got my call stack over here. So notice we were in the main function, and now we called power. And, and at this point, we called power with the, with the values of the parameters of, of x is 2 and y is 10, right? So now if we step down here, you know, y is not 0, y is not 1, y is greater than 1, y is 10. So we're going to hit this. But now we're going to call power again recursively, but subtracting 1 from y. So if we step into that, so notice our call stack. We're back in power again, but now we're at uh, in, in, in power uh, where the values of the parameters are 2 and 9. Right, so this is an example of. I mean, the call stack is the stack. We're going to talk about stacks in this class. Okay, so every time you call a function recursively, it pushes a new uh, set of, of, of values onto the stack. So you know, we we have to have different locations in memory for every recursive call of our power function. So you you can double click on these to go back. So so now I'm back to my first call of power. Um, so on on the stack, it had room set aside for my parameters x and y and the values of x and y in this version of, of, this, of power on the stack were 2 and 10. I can double click on this to go back to this one. So on this version of the stack the values of, of x and y were 2 and 9. And these are two separate versions of, of my parameters x and y and we need, we need a call stack like that in order to support recursion because but let me go ahead and um, uh, if we set a breakpoint at our uh, at our base case for when y is one, you'll see we'll go all the way down. We'll have ten recursive calls of power. So the first time when y was ten, and then we're going to call it uh, for y is nine, eight, seven, all the way down to one, right? So if I continue on from this point, we'll break here when we got down to our base case, and notice we've got ten versions of power on our stack. Our first one was when y was 10, and then we then then we, we reduced the problem to a smaller problem for y is 9, and then when y is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and so on. Now from here, this, this is where we end our recursion, and we're just going to return the value of x, which is 2, okay? So now when we return from that, let me go ahead and step over. Uh, now we're, we're going to return out of our stack uh, at the bottom of our call stack. Now we're back into the version of of power when y was 2. Uh, and we've just returned the, the value of x. So we're going to um, uh, multiply x times um, um, this. Uh, and that's going to get returned back. Okay. So anyway, this is going to end up popping all these, these, these calculations of, of, of multiplying x. The result is going to multiply x together 10 times from, from, from calling the stack, okay? So I just wanted to show you that. Make certain that, you know, that, that you, should, you should think about that. Make certain you kind of understand how this is working, how recursion is working, um, and this idea of the call stack, you know? So we'll get back to talk about stacks in more detail, detail later on in this class, but, but that, that is effectively how recursion works, is using your function call stack here, so. Um, all right. So, like I said, um, the video is a little bit longer than usual, but um, um, let me go back here. So, we did cover all these points. I gave you two examples of creating, uh, um, you know, of implementing a recursive description or definition of a function in actual C code. Talked a little bit, compared recursion iteration, um, and I looked at our function call stack, um, and I did all this kind of showing you incrementally developing the code, okay? So uh, hopefully that will help you with your programming assignments and help you uh, understand recursion a bit better. Um, that's it for this video, um, and I will see you uh, next time.